Okay? Yeah, you look at me, not the camera. Okay, Alan. All right? I've been told that before, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, we're making DVD uh, about Bill Norton's life. Are you happy to be interviewed for the DVD? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now, clearly, we, we don't know which parts of what we're talking about will appear in or, or, mm. or which mm. not. And I'm going to ask you about various aspects of your life which have similarities with, uh, with, with Bill Norton's. So, first of all, give us, tell us what your name is and where, were you, where you were born and brought up. My name is Alan Simpson. I was born in 1938 at the then Tenley's Hospital, which is now Bolton General Hospital. Um, I was brought up in an area of Bolton which no longer exists, unfortunately, like a lot of other areas at that time, around the fold. Um, my mother and father were both weavers and they worked at uh, well, a weaving shed, which is, or was, Walter Mathers, which is still, still stands, it's still there, but obviously. Where's that? Is that on Blackburn it's the Road? Old, it's the old Burton's. It was, it was originally Mathers, then it became Burton's. It's now factory units, really. So the bottom of Wapping Street. Got it, yeah, OK. Uh, overlooking the mop. Sorry, Alan, don't, don't join in. Sorry, Dave. Overlooking what they call the mop. Um, I went to the local primary school, Brandon Falls School, um, and quite honestly, Brandon Falls was a community in itself. Unfortunately, the only thing that's left standing now is an electricity substation. Um, but there were probably 40, 50 shops. There were seven, at least seven pubs. Uh, there were the chip shop, there was the mission, there was the school, of course, uh, and another bleach works quite close, um, Markfield Bleach Works, which is now under about 50 feet of earth, and Bolton Rugby Club play on that now. Uh, so that's my background, that's basically where I was brought up. Um, I can move on um, to a period a bit later. Okay. When you were talking about Brownlow Fold and the, it was a community in itself. Yeah. What sort of area was that? Would you have to walk more than a couple of hundred yards <coughs> to all these amenities you were talking about? Yeah, probably about? part. I mean, there is a book that I've, that I've written with all this information in, uh, and there is actually a, a map of the original Brownlow Fold. Um, it's an area probably, I would say, about a quarter of a mile square. And in, in that quarter of a mile square, as I said, there was one mill, one school, one chapel, all the shops I've mentioned, and the pubs, and, of course, row upon row of terraced, two up, two down houses, each with, or more often, tippler toilets, um, where you're just a kid especially, you sat on it, you were frightened to death in case you dropped 10 feet. Um, and one of my jobs was, of course, to prepare the toilet roll. Could but, you explain Tipler Toilet? Yeah, the Tipler Toilet. Um, actually, if you parted with anything, <laughs> it dropped into a, a sort of a bucket. Sorry, could we start that answer again because you hit the microphone? I'm sorry so. about that. No, not that. It dropped about... Probably, well, it sounded like 10 feet. Sorry, could we, because we can't cut that. Could you start again by saying tipple toilets are, or whatever? So start from the very beginning. It's of what... not easy to explain a tipple toilet without getting onto a delicate ground. Uh, no, it doesn't worry, it's just because just it's it the mic, you wouldn't be able to join the two together. It has to be the, the no, answer. No, it's fine. Could you explain tipple toilet to us? I'll try. <laughs> As you sat comfortably on a warm toilet seat and did what you were, went for, you would hear something drop below into a pan which was pivoted so that anything that dropped in the pan, once the pan had reached a particular level, it pivoted and it was automatically, well, flow, it flowed into the drains. That's the best I can tell you. So that was the primitive tipple of toilet. 
the predecessor to the ones that flush. Okay. What about your house? What was the house like that you lived in? It was a typical two up, two down terrace property. Uh, there was a, a living room. Um, there was a kitchen. Uh, just went through the kitchen. The, the squeezers were on the right hand side as you went in, which most people will remember as mangles. There was a dolly tub and posse. Um, there was there was a sink, and it was a it was a, a ceramic sink, sink, if you like. It wasn't one of the old one or two of those houses had the old uh, slop stones, which were literally stone. Um, but I was was quite modern. It had a, a relatively modern sink. Under the stairs, there was what we called a pantry. At the back outside was quite interesting because directly outside the window going into the yard, I mean, all the houses had a yard. Um, on the right, there was the coal shed. And then after that, joining to the coal shed was the toilet, obviously outside. But next to that was the ash pit. In the back wall of all those series properties, there was a, like a trap door. And every week when the bin men came round, uh, they used to move the trap door, which was not slid in, and they would empty the ashes from the ash pit, along with anything else that was thrown in the ash pit. Sometimes, uh, Accidentally, if the, if the ashes were still hot, you could find yourself with a, a fire in your, uh, in your outside yard. And, of course, I mentioned earlier, the mangle and the dolly tub and the posse. They were all related to the wash day. Now, around Brown the Fall, the wash day was always on a Monday. And woe betide anybody or anything that went up the back street on a Monday because all the washing was hung out on a Monday. So consequently, the bin men didn't even come near. Right. Okay. So you enjoyed living in Brownlow Fold. Is that right? Very much so, yeah. My mother and father had had the name down for a council house. And I would say it was late 50, late 1952, 51, 52, and we had a letter, my mother had a letter, to say that we'd been allocated a new three-bedroomed council house on the newly built Phase 2 Johnson Fold Estate, which was oh, Montserrat, um, near Old Lakes Golf Course. My mother and father were totally, they were absolutely, but as soon as my mother saw the rent, she sort of hesitated a bit and said, well, it's 26 and 4 months a week, but can we afford it, Harry, and my dad? Well, we'll manage, we'll be all right. Um, and at that time, he was just in the process, he'd just been a, a tram conductor, and a few years before he moved on in, into engineering as a, just as a labourer. So he said, well, I think we can do it. The day we moved on, I'll never forget, because my father had a, a friend called Joe Smith, and he was a general haulier, but he had a removal, a removal wagon. Um, and my dad arranged for him to take us to Johnson Fold. He arrived in the street early one morning. Uh, all the belongings, and what few there were, were piled onto the wagon. My mother and father and myself and my little sister cuddled up in the cab of the removal wagon and off we went with Joe. Arriving up Montserrat about 20 minutes later because we were all uphill. Um, and when we got there, there were t about 10 houses completed. <clears throat> but during that morning, other families were arriving, all looking in awe at these new houses, which none of us ever expected that we would live in. 
with gardens. Well, my dad had never even been in a garden, I don't think. Um, but I remember walking out into the back garden and seeing birds. I mean birds, not pigeons. All we ever saw in Brown the Fall were pigeons walking about looking for or scavenging for scraps. Um, so there were real birds. And just behind where we lived, all we could see were open fields. And that was unbelievable. And they were even turning up, some, some families were turning up with handcarts, uh, pushing and pulling wherever they'd come from in various parts of mainly, I would say, Hallowell side of Bolton. Um, and it was a period where it was, you can't imagine what it was like for children of our age to suddenly be in a, an environment that we'd never known before. Um, and it took some adjusting to, because we'd all been in such a close-knit community for so long, well, virtually all our childhood, and you were having to sort of get your mind round, what do I do now? There are other kids turning up with their mums and dads and thinking probably exactly the same I did. But, like kids at that age, you, you soon adapt and we were soon making friends. Um, and it was a fantastic period because we were discovering places. There was a farm at the top of the road where we'd moved into. Well, I'd never seen a farm before, close up. And we went to the, uh, to the, in fact, it's still there, I can still take you to that farm. And the farm was called Mr. Fogg. Consequently, the kids, of course, it was Fogg's farm. And the first time we saw that, there were some cows in the farmyard. They were just rather coming in and going out for milking. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. There was a cow looking at me. But the, I went on my own, there must have been about six or seven other children that were feeling exactly the same. And when the horses came and you could actually stroke them, well, that was fantastic. What about your mum and dad? Did they take to it? Oh, yeah. Well, the first, my mother, my mum, we always called them mum, um, the first thing she did, while my dad and Joe was unloading the furniture, she headed straight for the bathroom. A bath. I don't even know whether my mother had had a bath in the previous years. I don't know. We never even thought about a bath other than a tin bath in front of the fire. And sometimes when my dad came home from work, if he'd been working on the boilers, but he worked on the boilers, uh, if he was dirty, then of course he would have to sit in the bath in front of the fire while the middle was scrubbing down and we were banned into the kitchen. Uh, but a proper bathroom with a real bath, that was. So my mother actually dominated that bathroom for weeks. <laughs> okay. I, I think that's enough. I think we've got background.